God, we just ask you to meet us at the point of our need, God. 
we want you to know that you are welcome God and we bless you we honor you on today Jesus my Savior my King hallelujah you're welcome to rest and rule and reside in this place God in the name of Jesus you're holy you're awesome you're wonderful you're magnificent hallelujah God we give you glory on today Jesus hallelujah God we bow down and we worship you hallelujah we magnify your name Jesus there's nobody like you Lord hallelujah we know that you are a savior we know that you are a healer we know that you are a deliverer we know that you made the foundations of the world hallelujah so God we're going to stand on your word we're going to stand and we're going to bow down and we're going to worship you on today Jesus we didn't come for any shape form or fashion but God to worship and to magnify and to give your name glory and to give your name honor Jesus for you are God and you are God alone there's nobody like you Jesus so today we cast every burden down at your feet whether it's mental whether it's physical God we give it down unto you Jesus God we know that you can cast out demons and we know that you can cast out devils so today we're going to give everything that we have unto you God and today we worship you because you're worthy God you're worthy to be in this place and God today we welcome you so God I ask you to incline your ear unto our prayer and God to hear the meditation of our heart and let it be an acceptable in thy sight oh Lord our strength and our redeemer because today you're welcome and we worship you and we honor you Jesus hallelujah we bless your name today Jesus for every person that's under the sound of my voice God we give you glory we give you honor on today Jesus there's nobody like you God in the name of Jesus for every person that's sitting in their car whatever they stand in need of God I ask you to meet them at the point of their need God I ask you to touch every every singer God in the name of Jesus every musician God every elder every minister God in the name of Jesus God I ask you to speak heal deliver and set free God there's nobody like you hallelujah there's nobody like you Jesus you're welcome Jesus you're welcome my Savior you're welcome my King hallelujah you're welcome to move in me God whatever you need to do God I give it unto you God in the name of Jesus let your will be done God in the name of Jesus and let us begin to get into alignment God that we can worship you in spirit and in truth God in the name of Jesus and God today we're gonna thank you we're gonna bless your name Jesus we're gonna bless you Jesus hallelujah Jesus today we're just gonna give you praise we're gonna open up our mouths and thank you we're gonna lift up our hearts and we're gonna thank you because there's nobody like you there's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. And we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, my King, my Savior, my friend, my deliverer. We thank you, Jesus. We honor you on today, Jesus. God, we want you to know that we bless you on today. We don't have enough verbiage in our vocabulary to lift your name, but we want you to know that however we praise you, God, you're great and you're greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Oh, glory. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Right where you're at, you might be sitting in your car. You might be sitting in your living room. You might be in your bedroom. You might be in your kitchen. Hallelujah. Lift your voice with us as we proclaim his greatness on today. Hallelujah. And declare him worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on and tell him, say, Worthy is the Lamb. Is the Lamb. Come on, help 
me say I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Because you care for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. today, Lord, looking for you, Lord, to come in and touch our bodies, Lord, touch our minds, Lord, go into our homes, Lord, Lord, touch our family, Lord, keep an angel around about us, Lord, 
Lord, your protection, Lord. Lord, we look into you today, Lord. Touch our pastor, Lord. Anoint him for this time, for this place, for these people. And Lord, we just thank you. Oh, begin to put your hands together. Get your breakthrough in your car. Get your breakthrough at home. Get your breakthrough today. Lord Jesus, we love you. Have your way in us, Lord. Move wonders, Lord. Lord Jesus, we're calling on your name today. We need your power, Lord. Send it on down, Lord. Send that Holy Ghost on down. Send that anointing, Lord. Lord, we need a refilling, Lord. We need reviving, Lord. We need strength, Lord. We need your power, Lord. Lord Jesus, we're calling on your name because there's no name like yours, Lord. Your name is awesome. It's above all, Lord. It's for everything, Lord. Lord Jesus, hear us today, Lord. Move right now, Lord. Move up and down this parking lot. Move in the cars, Lord. Move, Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Give us that breakthrough. Break up that follow ground. Touch us, Lord. Lift us up today, Lord. We can't make it without you. We need the more of you, Lord. By your stripes, we are healed. Yes. Yes. The service is in your hand, Lord. Do as you will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people of God say amen, amen, amen. Our ministers are coming. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Has I not known, has I not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Can I read 31 again? But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, Readers and doers of his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Good afternoon, saints. Our New Testament scripture reading is coming from 2 Peter, verses 6 through 11, and it reads as so. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that in the world that are in the world. But the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to have to step down. I just feel so far from y'all. But how many of you are grateful today? Hallelujah. If you're grateful, let me hear you bump on your horn. I need to know that y'all with me today. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful to you, Lord. We are grateful for your love. Grateful for your mercy and grace. Come on, clap your hands with. 
with me if you're grateful today. Hallelujah. We came to bless your name, Lord, and to lift you up. Glory to God. We are grateful to you, Lord. We are grateful. Oh, 
How many grateful people out here on the day? Are you really grateful? Come on and hunk those horns. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless, let's bless him out here today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, the word of God says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Is there anybody out here on today that's glad for this beautiful day? Hallelujah. Has the Lord been good to anybody on the day? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give this praise team and band a hand and hook your horn. Amen. We honor the Lord on today. It's so nice to see those of you who are here we want to give a shout out to our live stream audience on today we're so excited that you have tuned in to be a part of our worship experience on today and we pray just not in your experience but even in all of our experience who are here in person that you will leave better then when you came hallelujah how many of you know it's important for you whenever you're in any worship experience that you leave there better than you came hallelujah can we just right where we are just for a few seconds i'm going to go into the word but just for a few seconds can we just begin to bless the Lord? To bless him. To bless him means to speak well of him. And I don't know about you, but the Lord has been nothing but graciously kind and good to me. And notice how I say this, in spite of me. Can you just be honest and real with yourself? Because the truth is, is that all of us are impaired in some kind of way. Am I right about it? We don't always we don't always have the right frame of mind. We're not always thinking the right things. That's not saying that you're sinning. That's just saying that you little, you know, you're having a little time. You're having a challenge. And it also says that you are human. Am I right about it? But in spite of all of that, the Lord looks over all of our faults and he continues to meet every one of our needs. So I just want to ask you just to hold the horns just for a few seconds whether you are in your vehicle or you are outside of your vehicle, I just want you to just take about 15, 20 seconds to begin to open up your mouth 
and just bless the Lord. On the count of three, just begin to open up your mouth and begin to bless the Lord. One, two, three. Come on. Come on. Just begin to bless the Lord. Begin to bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. children I love my two granddaughters I even love my dog he was chilling with me just last night laying up on the bed I love my mother my siblings I love you But I love the Lord more than anything. Is there anybody out there know what I'm talking about? I love you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, yeah. Go with me into Acts 28. Acts 28, if you have your handheld device, have your Bible app on your handheld device, or if you have the book in your hand, very familiar passages of Scripture over here in Acts 28. 
1 and 6. It says, once we were safe on shore. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island was very kind to us. It was cold, Paul, uh, Luke is writing. He says, it was cold and rainy. So they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. Verse number six said the people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw he wasn't harmed, the Bible says they changed their minds and decided that he was a God. On this afternoon, brothers and sisters, I really honestly came to encourage you and to talk to someone on the day and either in person or either by live stream, who have been going through some deep, dark trials. I want to speak to some people on today who have gone through some form of a fiery test, especially in the times we have been found living in, living through a pandemic and trying to navigate right now through what I would call an inflation. And to top it off, because the truth is, what many have been facing is just not normal everyday trials. Am I right about it? See, I really truly believe that there are some of you who are here, out here on these grounds. I really truly believe that there are some of you who are viewing and watching by live stream, you, you've, you've been experiencing some crazy trials, things that don't make sense, mind-blowing situations. You've been hit in ways that you never expected that you would ever be hit. And you've been hit harder than ever before. Am I talking to somebody? I'm going to tell you, it's, 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 it's not your imagination. Understand that. It, it is not your imagination. That is exactly what's happening at this point in time in your life. But let me tell you something on today. It's simply happening because you are a threat to the powers of darkness. It's because you've got something that a lot of professing believers don't have at this moment in their life. You have what a lot of churches are lacking, but it's all because you are anointed. I want you all to hear me on this day because when we look here in our text, we see in the text that Paul is being transported by ship to Rome. He's being transported by ship to Rome mm -hmm, to stand before Caesar, watch this, for the testimony of his faith. Paul, as they are breaking forth and going through the sea, mm -hmm, Paul warns them, as they are sailing of calamity that's coming ahead. But when you look at the situation, not one individual listened to what Paul had said. I got a question to ask somebody on the day because how many of you would be honest enough to say that you could have avoided a lot of hardships 
a whole lot of issues, a whole lot of problems in life if you would have just listened to some good advice. Hello, somebody. Am I preaching to somebody? But now watch this because even though they ignored the advice of Paul, mm -hmm, the Bible shows us and it shows us very clearly that even though they ignored his warning that God was merciful. Yes, he sent Paul, listen to this, he sent Paul an angel. Mm -hmm. And the angel had a message. And the message that the angel was sharing with Paul was that God has given you all of them which sail with you. That right there tells me something, my friends. Oh, yes, it does. That you better stay anointed. Oh, my God. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's happening, what's brewing around you at this moment, at this time, and at this juncture, and at this point in your life. You better stay anointed. I don't care what people are saying, what they are doing. I don't care what's trying to rise up against you at this time in your life. I decree and declare to somebody on the day right now where we have been found in history, you better stay anointed. I don't care how good it looks or how uh -huh, good it may sound or how big it is or how popular it is. Or I don't care who they are. My God, the one question you better be asking yourself, where is uh, the anointing? Uh, and you better ask yourself, is the anointing in it or are they anointed? Hear me now, because I'm not mm -hmm, against talent, nor am I ever against education or high skills. But the gift is, the fact is, is that when I'm going through something, when I'm catching hell, when the devil and wicked people are trying to destroy me, when the devil is trying to literally annihilate me and kill me and kill my family, when the enemy is trying to kill my ministry, it's not talent that I need. It's not education that I need or high skills that I need, but it's something called the anointing. See, Paul, when you look at Paul, Paul, mm -hmm, Paul was not just a man, but he was a man anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. And I got news for somebody on that because you need to stay with the anointing. Do I have any help out here on today? How many of you know that regardless what's going on and what's happening around you and what's happening even in the world right now, what's going on even in our country in the political realm, how many of you know that you better stay with the anointing because let me tell you something uh-huh yes yes because your victory and your healing your miracle and your deliverance your destiny is with yes the anointing my brothers and sisters see it's impossible mm -hmm, to overestimate the importance of the power of the anointing that is on your life your business and the people on your job and I'm talking to somebody right now and I want y'all to catch what I'm about to say because see your business and when you look at people who may be on your job they might not know it but they are blessed because you're there your family this church they are blessed because of you because simply because you are 
anointed. Oh yes, and because of the anointing on your life, lives are going to become preserved and souls are going to become saved and whatever plans that Satan has will not succeed, but I'm here to tell you they're going to fall apart because of the anointing and the power of God that resonates on your life. We see here in our text, brothers and sisters, we see within our text on today that the Apostle Paul has just survived a major shipwreck. Uh huh. And he has become bitten by a snake. Not just any kind of snake, but the Bible describes the snake as a viper. And this is not just an everyday common variety snake, but it is a very deadly viper. This kind of viper, you have to understand that it is this kind of viper that is known to be deadly on the island of Malta. You have many times where these islanders have seen the horrible deaths that had resulted because of the poison of this viper's bite. Yes, brothers and sisters, by them knowing the deadliness of this kind of snake or this viper, as soon as they see the viper hanging on Paul's hand, they go to forecasting his death. I got to stop right there and just drop something on you right quick. And I want y'all to hear me when I say this Because there are some folks around many of you There are people who are hanging around you That know you've been going through something They know you've been catching some form of hell in your life They know that you're going through some type of spiritual struggle Even right now in your life They know that you're going through something something. They know that the devil has attacked you. And right now, what hap what's going on with them as it relates to you? You have some people who are literally forecasting your death. And I'm going to tell you this. There are some people that are happy that you got bit. There are some people who are happy uh -huh, that you got hit and you got hit hard. There are some people who have watched you get hit so hard and they're trying to figure out whether you're going to survive. Uh, and I'm here to even tell you that you've got some people who, e who are even, yes, taking pleasure in your pain. See, they want to see you cry. They want to see you go through. They want to see you broken. They want to see you perplexed. They want to see you lose your mind. Can I preach to you on a day? But see, I'm reminded, oh yes, I'm reminded of a story in the Bible about a man by the name of Joseph. Yes, because when you look at Joseph, it was Joseph's brothers who had threw him into a pit. They threw him into that pit Yes, and they left him in that pit to die. And they sat down on the side of the pit. And they sat there and they had a little lunch. In other words, they were entertained. And they entertained themselves listening to their brother Joseph cry for help. I said that to say this to somebody on today because they there are some people around you that are enjoying your pain. They are glad you got bit. And what they're saying is things like I knew that they weren't going to make it. I knew that they weren't qualified for that position. I knew 
knew that the job that, that they claimed they weren't ready for. Can I preach to somebody on the day? I know, I know that their children were going to end up on drugs. I knew that son was going to end up in prison. And I knew that they were no good. Can, can I preach, y'all? Can I preach to you? See, they thought that they were all of that. They thought that they were on top. They thought that they were all wonderful. But looking at what they're going through, I see that they really ain't all that. And I see that they're really not all that wonderful. And listen, brothers and sisters, you got some people who are taking pleasure in your pain. Let me tell you guys something on today. See, they watched him. Would somebody hunk your horn on that? Yes, they watched him. Uh huh. They watched Paul. They watched him. They looked on him. And as they were looking on Paul, they were expecting him to die. But I'm here to tell you something that there was something supernatural that took place in that situation. God got in it and Paul disappointed some people. In other words, what I'm about to say is, is that Paul, uh-huh, he didn't die. And I got news, I got news, I got some news for about 100 people out here today. If you will begin to honk your horns, those of you who are watching by live stream, who will begin to praise God like you don't care what people think about you. I'm here to tell you, you're getting ready to disappoint some people. Holy Trinity, I'm talking to you now. You're getting ready to disappoint some people because there's some people that thought y'all was going to die. Or oh, y'all don't hear me. They had counted you out. They thought you were going to fold. They thought you were going to give in. Oh, I don't hear nobody out here. But let me tell you something on today. As a matter of fact, there are some people that already had y'all dead. As a matter of fact, they had been praying that y'all would die over here and was celebrating your expiration date. Oh, but my God, you better look at somebody. You better honk your horn and you better let somebody know that there is no expiration date on my on my anointing. Oh, I hope I got a church that I can preach to today. I'm not saying that I'll never be bit again. I'm not saying that I'll never have to go through another battle again. I'm not saying that I won't shed another tear again, but I beat the devil. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I beat the devil. You better tell somebody and let them know that I beat the devil. Oh, yes, you did. You beat the devil. Am I talking to anybody out here? Am I talking to anybody by live stream? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, you better lean over in your out of your window and just speak to somebody and let them know and say, neighbor, I'm still standing and I'm kept by the power of God. Paul, 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 come on somebody. Paul, Paul, when you look at Paul, yes, it looks bad. The viper, yes, is deadly and no one has ever survived its bite but God. Oh, I don't hear nobody but God. Can I tell y'all something? Whenever 
the hand of God is on your life. Whenever you are in the palm of the hand of God, whenever the hand of God is over your life, whenever you're being guided by the power of God, I don't care how many devils, I don't care how many people will try to hinder you, but God, and if God be with you, he's more than the world that is against you. I'm not ready for that. Oh, yes, the thing that you have to understand when you look at this story, they thought that Paul was going to fall out. They thought the thing that looked so big, the thing that made him cry, the thing that may had broke his heart, the thing that looked like you would never recover from, it made you, it strengthened you, it encouraged you. In other words, what I'm saying is, is that any time God will allow you to go through any type of situation where it looks like on the outside that you're getting ready to go under. God has a way of slipping in. And when he slips in, instead of you going under, God brings you up and brings you over. And just like that, when you look at Paul, oh, I don't hear nobody in here. And that's why you need to tell the devil from time to time that, yes, I'm in a pandemic and I'm sick of this recession. I'm tired of this inflation. But I, I ain't going to die that I, that I'm not quitting, that I'm, that I'm not giving up. I won't quit dreaming. I won't quit serving. I won't stop praying. And I'm not going to stop sowing and believing that God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask or think. Am I talking to anybody who's out here today who's ever been bit before in your life? Anybody who's ever felt the devil sink his fangs in your life? Am I talking to anybody who knows that God did a miracle for you? That God delivered you and healed you and God brought you through whatever situation. And as I, 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 as I get ready to close out my sermon on today, every time Paul looked down at his hand and saw scars. It was only a reminder that the devil could not make it stick. Yes, and I just stopped by to tell somebody you're going to make it. Yes, you're going to make it. I know it's painful. I know it's I know know it's hard, but I encourage you to let you know that it's not fatal. I'm ready, bro, Wooly. I know, oh yes, oh yes, I do. I know it hurts, but God, but God will heal it. I know it looks bad, but God, 
has a way of turning things around for your good. I know you're crying, but I got news. Your weeping may endure for a night, but joy, 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 your joy is coming in your morning. And I got some good news for somebody as I close. I know you may be in convenienced and frustrated. You may be angry. You may be mad. You may be upset. You may be hurt. Your heart may be broken. Your spirit, man or woman, might be torn. But the reason you're going through, the reason you're being pressed, the reason you're under attack is simply because you are, you are anointed. It's because the hand of God is on your life. It's because you are a threat to the powers of hell. It's because you won't compromise. And it's because every time the enemy looks at you, he sees Jesus working in you. And if there's any one thing that the devil knows simply about, it is the anointing. He knows the anointing and he hates it because it reminds him of every time he was once the anointed cherub and he covered the holiness of God and whatever way the glory would move you find a cherub by the name of Lucifer which means son of the morning whichever way the glory of God would turn he would turn with the glory his job was to protect the holiness of God and whenever he would turn built within him were instruments strings and organs yeah and whenever he would move his body would give off praise on the God and all of heaven would begin to give God glory so the devil is angry the devil is mad he put a hit out on you he can't stand you he wants to annihilate you he wants to kill you simply because every time he sees you operating in the will of God he recognizes what he lost in heaven and you are a little bit lower than the angels. What is man that thou art so mindful of him that you would crown him? Yes, he's a little lower than the angels, but there is something about you that stirs up the devil and he makes you an open target because of your anointing. And as I close, Paul not only shook the viper off and survived, he shook it off into the fire, which simply means that the vipers 
life had ended. That viper was destroyed simply because of the anointing. Yes, all yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. I'm closing now, but in my closing, lean on your horn and give God a praise for you are the anointed. You are the righteousness of God. Yeah, yes, yes. Because you are anointed, you're feeling the effects that you're feeling. You are going through what you are going through. You're being hard pressed because of being anointed. And every time the devil looks at you, he sees Jesus in you. And it makes him go bonkers. He loses all sense of reality. And he stands in opposition to anything that you desire to go forward in. I just stopped by to encourage you and to tell you it's because you are anointed. There are some people who are blessed because of you and they don't even realize it. They're blessed because of you, because you are anointed. Hallelujah. And I want to pray for some people out here today who know that this word was for you on today, who know that this message was for you on today. I want to pray for those of you who are on the live stream. Shoot me a message. Let me know that this word was for me. Pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. But if you're out here today, the altar is right where you stand. If you're in your car, just stick your hand out your window. If you're standing up outside your car, just lift both of your hands. I want to pray for you. Oh, we're going to be pulling up out of here in less than eight minutes. It's hot out here, y'all. Father, I'm praying for my brothers and sisters on today. Those with their hands up. Those who are watching by live stream. Father, I'm praying that you will meet every one of them at the point of their need. Give them that endurance, that perseverance, that anointing to bulldoze and continue to press forward. In spite of whatever obstacles may come and arise in their life. Father, give them that pit bull mentality. Give them a mind of a champion, a fighter to continue to persevere to continue to move upward so they can go over. Father, that's my prayer for them on today. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver out of them all. Father, I decree and declare that word in every listening ear and every person watching by live stream and it is so in Jesus Christ's name amen can we just give God a
praise out here. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Oh, you move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform. How many of you know that he made a way for you? That he made a way that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works within you. Works within you. I want to open the doors of the church on today because there may be someone out here, out here on these hollow grounds you would like to become a part of this church family we want you to know that we love to have you as a brother or a sister in Christ and if you're here the only thing you got to do is just wave your hand we just need to see who you are if you are here if you're watching by live stream and you're saying Pastor Wells I want to be a part of the Total Man Ministry family I want to be a part of Holy Trinity I want you to just drop that down in the remark section and we will respond to you immediately. Immediate response to you. Amen. Little brother Houston is leaving for the Air Force on tomorrow, y'all. And we want to pray for him as he goes into our armed forces. Father, we pray a covering over your, over your son as he heads into boot training and then from boot training into his actual training for what he signed to serve in. Father, we pray that you would keep your hand on him protect him, guide him, order his steps, give him favor with his superiors. We're praying rapid rank moving or movement in the name of Christ Jesus and the favor of God is on your life. And it is so. Amen. Come on, let's praise God. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power, you perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible, and we're staying. It is seed planting time. It is seed planting time.